Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the very basics of formed elements. So formed elements is a fancy term for really just the cells of the blood. And we have three types of cells. We have red blood cells or erythrocytes, white blood cells or leukocytes, and then platelets, which are also called thrombocytes. So these are our three formed elements. If we take a look at this right here, this is actually what happens when you centrifuge a blood sample. Plasma, which we talked about before, plasma, as we know, contains the water component and proteins, nutrients, hormones, and all sorts of goodies. Okay? But then the remainder of it, which is the buffy coat and the hematocrit, these are all the formed elements. The buffy coat, which is really just about 1% of the blood, that's going to contain the white blood cells or leukocytes and the platelets or thrombocytes. And then the hematocrit down here, this is obviously going to be the red blood cells or erythrocytes. Okay. Now, each one of these different cells is going to circulate in the blood and perform different functions. So generally speaking, erythrocytes, they're going to be functioning in transport of respiratory gases. Okay, so cells are going to require oxygen, and then we need to get rid of waste products like carbon dioxide. So these red blood cells through their hemoglobin protein is going to transport oxygen and CO2. Erythrocytes also are going to last around, on average, 120 days. This is an important number to know for anatomy and physiology. This is the lifespan of a red blood cell. Leukocytes are just going to function in immune protection. These are part of our immune system. So they're going to function in the immune response and defending against foreign pathogens. Okay? This is an example of a leukocyte right here. Uh, leukocytes are going to last anywhere from hours to years. The last formed element is a platelet or thrombocyte, one of which is shown right here. The thrombocytes are going to function in initiating coagulation, or sometimes referred to as clotting, if we're looking at it simplistically. Okay? This is a platelet. They only last about 8 to 10 days. Okay? Now, all three classes of these cells are formed through a process called hemopoiesis or hematopoiesis. These mean the same thing. Sometimes the terms alternate depending on the textbook. And this is just a term for the process of making blood cells. Okay? This is a process that occurs in the red bone marrow. So all three cell types are made in the red bone marrow. Now the process specifically of making red blood cells, since they're called erythrocytes, is called erythropoiesis. Likewise, for producing white blood cells, which are called leukocytes, this is called leukopoiesis. And then platelets, which are called thrombocytes, this process is called thrombopoiesis. And so we can say hematopoiesis generally, but if we want to refer to a specific type of blood cell formation, we can use these three terms. Hematopoiesis is very complicated. What I'm going to do is skip this slide for now. We'll do this in a separate video. I'm going to talk about hematopoiesis very generally. And what I'll mention is that all three of these formed elements are going to originate from a pluripotent stem cell called a hemocytoblast. So notice all of these cells come from the hemocytoblast. But depending on what kind of colony stimulating factors we have, we can get different cell types. So what a colony stimulating factor is, is it's a type of molecule that will sort of nudge the hemocytoblast to go in one of these four directions. It'll either nudge it to form erythrocytes, or it'll nudge it to form platelets, or these leukocytes, or lymphocytes. Right? And so it really just dictates which direction or which cell lineage the hemocytoblast will differentiate into. Now, depending on the colony stimulating factors, the hemocytoblast can either differentiate into the myeloid stem cell lineage or the lymphoid stem cell lineage. So these are two a little more specialized stem cells. Okay? So the hemocytoblast can differentiate first into the myeloid stem cells. All right? Now, again, depending on the specific colony stimulating factors, the myeloid stem cell can differentiate into a red blood cell, a platelet, or these specific leukocytes, which are neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, and monocytes. We'll talk more about these specifically later. However, to get red blood cells, also called erythrocytes, 
we actually have to have this colony stimulating factor or a hormone called erythropoietin or EPO. EPO is released by the kidneys and it stimulates erythropoiesis. In other words, it really stimulates the myeloid stem cell to differentiate into an erythrocyte. Now EPO or erythropoietin, you may have heard about this in the news several years ago when Lance Armstrong, who was a professional cyclist who won, I don't remember how many Tour de France's, but he was accused of using EPO or blood doping. Uh, it turns out that you can actually increase your aerobic capacity, which is useful for cycling, by having more red blood cells. And so he was accused of actually taking EPO, which is illegal. It turns out in the end he actually did, and he was revoked of all of his medals. But that's just a little aside to help you remember this. Now, we can also have another hormone that's also released by the kidneys called thrombopoietin. This is another type of colony stimulating factor that will cause the myeloid stem cell to differentiate into the platelet lineage. This is called thrombopoiesis, thus the name thrombopoietin. So thrombopoietin triggers the myeloid stem cell to differentiate first into a very large cell called a megakaryocyte. Okay? The megakaryocyte is a huge, enormous cell, and ultimately what will happen is this giant cell will fragment into little bitty platelets. Okay? Platelets are actually the smallest of all the formed elements. But that's through thrombopoietin. And then through other colony stimulating factors, which we won't mention here, the myeloid stem cell can differentiate into these specific leukocytes. So leukocytes are white blood cells, and there's many subtypes of white blood cells, which include here neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, and monocytes. All right? That's the myeloid lineage. There's another lineage that's not as complicated called the lymphoid lineage. And so, again, certain colony stimulating factors can cause the hemocytoblast to differentiate into a lymphoid stem cell. And really the major thing that comes from the lymphoid lineage is going to be the leukocyte called a lymphocyte. So these are two very easily confused terms. Leukocyte is the general term for all white blood cells, but a lymphocyte is a specific type of leukocyte. A lymphocyte is a specific type of white blood cell. Okay? And then there are other factors which we'll talk about much later when we talk about the immune system, which will trigger lymphocytes to differentiate further into what are called T cells, natural killer cells, or B cells. Okay? But in general, the process of forming white blood cells from either the myeloid or lymphoid lineage is called leukopoiesis. Okay? So hopefully this makes sense. Again, in a typical anatomy course, you wouldn't be required to know the specific colony stimulating factors other than thrombopoietin and erythropoietin. And we'll look at this much more detailed look of hematopoiesis in a separate video. All right? But what I want to make clear is that which formed element is made depends on which specific colony stimulating factors that you have. And again, these are just growth factors that influence the maturation and differentiation of the blood cells. So they trigger this hemocytoblast and then corresponding stem cells here, they trigger them to differentiate into different cell lineages. Okay? Because we have the red blood cell lineage and we have the platelet lineage and this leukocyte lineage and this one over here. Depending on which colony stimulating factors you have, you get a different formed element. Okay? But the major things that you would need to know for any anatomy course would again be the specific scientific names of the formed elements, which are the erythrocytes, leukocytes, thrombocytes. You'd also need to know the lifespan, especially for erythrocytes. Very common question on exams. And then, of course, where hematopoiesis occurs. It occurs in the red bone marrow, and all of those cells are derived from our hematocytoblast. All right? So hopefully this makes sense. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much. Here's a plug for The Anatomy Gal, a channel made by my friend and colleague, Natalie Wade. She's got excellent tutorials and explanations for lab materials in anatomy and physiology, even with cadavers, so it's really cool. Be sure to check out her channel and subscribe. A link is in the description below.